This video is my attempt at creating a dynamic diagram of mental spaces. I'll first show you the video and then explain how to understand it. Yeah, well, I just want to know like, what's going on with in school, kind of. Like, okay. Yeah, so, um, well, yesterday I received the call from a vice principal, mm -hmm. and he said that the incident happened in school involving where he and his friends were intimidating a girl from his class. And he told me that they haven't pushed her, they haven't touched her. Um, the vice principal told you? Yeah. No, no, vice principal told me. Okay. That um, it was just a verbal threat, but what they did is actually, since she was, I guess, threatening them, they cornered her into one room and... Wait, um, she was... Wait, they were threatening her? I thought no, no, she, she was, was threatening them. She hit. Oh, I thought she was like, in, like threatening her. No, no. Well, this is what happened. She hit one of my friends in the head. And she was chasing all of them. And they were running away from her. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they went into this room, uh, all five of them, and she went after them. But they went out and they um, locked her in, so they wouldn't let her come out of the room. Oh, of course. So... Is that what they got in trouble for? Yes. Even yeah, that's like barely nothing, because like, she was chasing them, right? Yeah, she was chasing them and she wanted to, and previously she also hit other kids. This time she only hit one, but previously she was hitting I mean, it oh, just okay. seems like it's because she's a woman. Like, if it was a boy who was doing the same thing and they, like, lock a boy in a room, like, yeah. they would be in trouble. Yeah. So what happened is that basically that she felt intimidated by being locked in a room and not being able to get out. Or basically, I don't know if, they, if she was locked or they were actually holding the door she can't get out. Mm -hmm. Well, does she like have a history of being a bully, or...? Yes, she does have a history of being a bully. And she has a specific history of bullying boys. <laughs> That's um, such a junior high school thing. That was quite fast, wasn't it? Um, it's amazing how our brains can do all of that without our conscious knowledge. Now to explain. Um, when we speak, we create mental spaces by framing the facts we relay to our conversation partners. As a simple example, um, we implicitly understand that if I say, my friend said Christmas is in July, that this is only a belief in his mind, not a fact. That's a mental space. Um, mental spaces also include statements about the past, about someone's mistaken beliefs, about possibilities, if-then statements, etc. Um, now, let me explain what you just saw. I represented a conversation between two speakers, A and B, on the left and right. Um, when a speaker is speaking, their speech is shown in the green area below. A mouth icon is displayed, their sight is pink, and their speech is purple. When they're listening, um, an ear icon is displayed, their sides light blue, and the speech they hear is black. Um, the listener parses the sentence word by word, trying to match the mental spaces in the mind of the speaker. Um, Mental spaces are displayed in the large white areas at the center. Um, 
each has three different areas. Each mental space has three different areas. The bottom white area displays the frame that defines each mental space. Mental spaces are created through lexical triggers, um, words such as he said or yesterday, and through our knowledge of the world. Um, the mental spaces are displayed roughly on a timeline going from left to right. Uh, in the yellow space at the top of each mental space, the roles that are active in each space are shown as a letter, A, B, C, D, etc. Um, in the black space at the center, these roles are given values such as G equals girl or functions such as V comma B comma call, which means V calls B. Um, as the sentences are parsed by the listener, they both create mental spaces as needed and assign values to various roles. Um, this parsing is diagrammed as the pink dashed line. Um, occasionally, the listener misunderstands the speaker, which in these diagrams, um, these diagrams changes the speech to red. Um, this type of ambiguity often leads the listener to ask for clarification. In this diagram, yes-no fact-checking questions are shown as circled values, and who or what questions are shown as an empty circle or null set. Finally, um, the area allotted for mental spaces quickly fills up. I've provisionally solved this problem by periodically uploading the information to the purple area above, um, where it remains available. Uh, this area is analogous to uh, long-term memory. Occasionally, information from the long-term memory is downloaded into the mental spaces. It's like analogous to knowledge, I guess. Um, so this has only been a very short explanation of mental spaces. Um, for more, please refer to Mappings in Thought and Language by Guy Fauconnier, um, which is F-A-U-C-O-N-N-I-E-R. Um, so many of the ideas in this video are taken from this book, um, though some of the ideas are my invention. And I should say that uh, anyone familiar with cognitive linguistics might um, note that I've not addressed the concepts of focus and viewpoint, um, still yet to do, and that I've not drawn connections between corresponding roles in different spaces the way um, Fauconnier might do. Um, I guess the last thing I should do is thank Eve Sweetser and my grad seminar. Um, for ideas and support, and I should say that this is officially not associated with UC Berkeley. Um, thanks.